Today we explain the history of the thrilling true nation called the Republic of Pirates. Imagine a world where the azure waters of the Caribbean were ruled not by kings or empires, but by men and women who lived by their own code. A world where the line between hero and villain blurred on the decks of ships, bristling with cannon and filled with treasure. Let's explore the rise and fall of the Republic of Pirates and the enduring legacy they left in the annals of history. Foundation and Location 1716 In the early years of the 18th century, the Caribbean was a hotbed of piracy, a place where the bold and the lawless sought both fortune and freedom. By 1716, Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas, had become the epicenter of this anarchic world. Situated ideally in the warm waters of the Caribbean, Nassau offered a perfect hideout for pirates. Its deep natural harbour could accommodate their ships, while the shallow waters and treacherous reefs around the island provided protection from larger naval vessels. Nassau's location, at the crossroads of major shipping routes, made it an ideal base for launching raids on the merchant ships, travelling between Europe and the American colonies. This accessibility, combined with its strategic defences, transformed Nassau into the bustling hub of what would become known as the Republic of Pirates. The pirates were not merely opportunists, they were also highly organised. They quickly established Nassau as a pirate republic, a self-governing community where the rule of law was replaced by the rule of the cutlass. The pirates governed themselves with a system of codes and agreements that ensured fair treatment among their ranks and equitable division of plunder. This egalitarian approach was in stark contrast to the rigid hierarchies of the navies and merchant ships they preyed upon. The pirate codes also fostered a sense of solidarity and mutual respect among the diverse group of outlaws who called Nassau home. Nassau's transformation into a pirate haven was not without consequence. The presence of the pirates disrupted the economic stability of the Caribbean. Merchants and traders feared the waters, and the flow of goods and wealth was significantly impeded. As Nassau grew in prominence, so too did the boldness of its residents. The pirates of the Republic took to the seas in ever larger numbers, their fleets swelling with captured vessels and stolen goods. The British government, and indeed all lawful authorities in the region, grew increasingly concerned about the threat posed by this new pirate stronghold. Despite these concerns, the Republic of Pirates thrived. The streets of Nassau teemed with activity, and its harbours were filled with the sounds of hammers on wood as pirate crews repaired and outfitted their ships for new ventures. Markets overflowed with exotic goods from across the globe, brought in by the pirates and sold at a fraction of their usual price. Nassau became a melting pot of cultures and characters, a place where anyone with enough daring could carve out a life of adventure and wealth. However, the Republic of Pirates was a fleeting phenomenon. The same strategic location that made Nassau an ideal base for piracy also made it a target for suppression. As the British government began to take decisive action against the pirates, Nassau's days as a haven for the lawless were numbered. The Republic's foundation, built on the shifting sands of piracy and plunder, could not withstand the growing pressure from the world's naval powers. Benjamin Hornigold Among the many infamous figures of the Republic of Pirates, Benjamin Hornigold stands out as a pivotal character. Born around 1680, Hornigold was a seasoned privateer before turning to piracy. His intimate knowledge of naval tactics and the Caribbean waters made him a formidable force. Hornigold arrived in Nassau around 1716 and quickly established himself as a leader among the pirates. His ship, the Ranger, became a symbol of his dominance and his strategic acumen. Hornigold's approach to piracy was unique. Unlike many of his contemporaries, he was reluctant to attack British ships, a remnant of his loyalty to England as a former privateer. Instead, he focused his efforts on capturing ships from other nations, particularly the Spanish and French. This strategic decision not only minimised conflict with a powerful British navy, but also secured him a steady stream of plunder. Hornigold's leadership and tactics earned him the respect of his peers and the fear of his enemies. One of Hornigold's most significant contributions to the Republic of Pirates was his mentorship of Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. Hornigold saw potential in the young pirate and took him under his wing. Under Hornigold's guidance, Blackbeard learned the art of piracy and honed the skills that would later make him one of the most feared pirates of all time. 
This mentorship marked the beginning of Blackbeard's meteoric rise within the pirate ranks, and it solidified Hornigold's legacy as a kingmaker within the pirate community. Despite his success, Hornigold's career as a pirate was relatively short-lived. In 1717, as British pressure on Nassau increased, Hornigold accepted a royal pardon from King George I, effectively ending his life of piracy. He turned his efforts towards hunting down former comrades who had refused the pardon, a move that branded him a traitor in the eyes of many. Hornigold's decision to switch sides was driven by pragmatism. He recognized that the days of unchecked piracy in Nassau were coming to an end and sought to secure his own future. Hornigold's life after accepting the pardon was fraught with danger and complexity. Although he had abandoned piracy, his knowledge of the pirates' tactics and hideouts made him a valuable asset to the British. He spent his final years as a privateer once more, this time in service to the Crown, helping to root out the very pirate community he had helped to build. Hornigold's story is a testament to the fluid and often contradictory nature of loyalty and survival in the golden age of piracy. Establishment of Pirate Governance The Republic of Pirates was more than a loose collection of thieves. It was a community bound by a unique system of governance that set it apart from other pirate enclaves. In Nassau, the pirates established a democratic framework that was remarkably advanced for its time. Decisions were made collectively, with each member of the crew having a voice in matters of importance. This system, based on pirate codes, ensured that power was distributed equally and that leadership was accountable to the people it governed. Central to the pirate governance was the Pirate Code, a set of rules that dictated everything from the division of plunder to the treatment of captured prisoners. These codes were often agreed upon before embarking on a voyage and were strictly enforced. Violations could result in severe punishments, including marooning or execution. The Pirate Code promoted a sense of order and fairness, providing a structured environment that contrasted sharply with the chaotic image often associated with piracy. One of the most significant aspects of pirate governance was the election of captains. Unlike the rigid command structures of naval and merchant ships, pirate crews elected their leaders based on merit and consensus. Captains were chosen for their courage, navigational skills and ability to lead in battle. However, their power was not absolute. They could be deposed by the crew if they failed to perform their duties or acted against the collective interests of the group. This system of leadership ensured that captains remained accountable and that the crew's needs were prioritized. The distribution of plunder was another area where pirate governance demonstrated its commitment to equality. Unlike in the navies of the time, where captains and officers took the lion's share of the spoils, pirate crews divided their loot according to agreed-upon shares. Captains and officers received a larger portion, but every crew member was guaranteed a fair share based on their rank and role. This practice not only fostered loyalty and morale, but also attracted new recruits who saw piracy as a more equitable alternative to traditional seafaring professions. The governance structure of the Republic of Pirates was revolutionary in many ways. It provided a model of egalitarianism and democratic decision, making that was rare in the 17th and 18th centuries. This approach to self-rule created a strong sense of community and mutual respect among the pirates, allowing them to maintain a relatively stable and prosperous society despite their illegal activities. The legacy of pirate governance would influence future rebellions and democratic movements, demonstrating that even in a world of outlaws, order and justice could prevail. Blackbeard's reign Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, is perhaps the most iconic figure to emerge from the Republic of Pirates. His fearsome appearance, with a long black beard and slow burning fuses in his hat, struck terror into the hearts of sailors across the Caribbean. Blackbeard's reign as a pirate was marked by audacity and cunning, and his exploits have become the stuff of legend. Born in Bristol, England, around 1680, Teach turned to piracy under the tutelage of Benjamin Hornigold. By 1717, he had taken command of his own ship and embarked on a career that would make him one of the most infamous pirates of all time. Blackbeard's flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, was a formidable vessel equipped with 40 guns. With this powerful ship, he conducted a series of daring raids, capturing numerous vessels and amassing a considerable fortune. 
One of his most notorious exploits was the blockade of Charleston, South Carolina, in May 1718. Blackbeard and his crew held the town hostage, demanding a chest of medicine in exchange for the release of their captives. The audacity of this act demonstrated Blackbeard's willingness to use psychological tactics and sheer intimidation to achieve his goals. Despite his fearsome reputation, Blackbeard was known to be a shrewd and strategic leader. He often relied on his menacing image to avoid conflict, preferring to intimidate his enemies into surrendering rather than engaging in costly battles. This strategy allowed him to maintain a powerful fleet with minimal loss of life and resources. His ability to command respect and instill fear without resorting to unnecessary violence set him apart from many of his contemporaries. Blackbeard's reign came to a dramatic end in November 1718. The British government, determined to rid the seas of the pirate menace, dispatched Lieutenant Robert Maynard to hunt him down. After a fierce battle off the coast of North Carolina, Blackbeard was killed in hand-to-hand -hand combat. His head was severed and hung from the bow of Maynard's ship as a grim warning to other pirates. The death of Blackbeard marked a significant turning point in the British campaign against piracy and symbolised the beginning of the end for the Republic of Pirates. Blackbeard's legacy endures to this day. His larger-than-life persona and the tales of his exploits continue to captivate the imaginations of people around the world. He has become a symbol of the golden age of piracy, embodying the daring, ruthlessness and cunning that define the era. Through stories, films and folklore, Blackbeard remains a central figure in the narrative of the Republic of Pirates and a testament to the enduring allure of the pirate life. Charles Vane's Leadership Charles Vane was one of the most aggressive and uncompromising pirates to emerge from the Republic of Pirates. Born around 1680, Vane became notorious for his fierce resistance to British authority and his ruthless tactics. Unlike many of his peers, who accepted royal pardons in exchange for an end to their piratical ways, Vane remained defiantly opposed to the British efforts to suppress piracy. His career was marked by a series of bold and violent confrontations with naval forces and other pirates. Vane's leadership style was characterized by his willingness to take on any adversary, regardless of the odds. He commanded a series of ships, the most famous of which was the Ranger, and led his crew on numerous successful raids. Vane was known for his skill in naval combat and his ability to evade capture. His aggressive tactics earned him a fearsome reputation and made him a target for the British authorities. Despite the increasing pressure, Vane continued to operate out of Nassau, using the island as a base for his operations. One of Vane's most famous exploits occurred in July 1718, when he captured a powerful French warship and added it to his fleet. This victory was a testament to his audacity and tactical prowess. However, Vane's refusal to follow orders or cooperate with other pirate leaders often led to friction within the pirate community. His confrontational nature eventually led to his downfall. After a series of disputes with his crew and other pirates, Vane was deposed as captain and replaced by the more cooperative and popular Calico Jack Rackham. Vane's fall from grace did not deter him from continuing his piratical activities. He acquired a small sloop and resumed his attacks on merchant vessels. However, without the support of a large crew or powerful ship, his operations were less successful. In November 1718, Vane's luck ran out when his sloop was wrecked in a storm on an uninhabited island in the Bay of Honduras. Stranded and alone, he was eventually discovered and captured by a passing ship. Charles Vane was brought to trial and hanged in March 1719. His execution was part of a broader campaign to stamp out piracy in the Caribbean and serve as a warning to others who might be tempted to follow in his footsteps. Despite his violent end, Vane's legacy as a fiercely independent and unyielding pirate leader endures. He is remembered as a symbol of defiance against the encroaching forces of law and order, a true rebel of the high seas. Mary Reed and Anne Bonny The Republic of Pirates was not solely the domain of men. It also provided a stage for the remarkable lives of female pirates like Mary Reed and Anne Bonny. These two women defied the rigid gender norms of their time to become active and formidable members of pirate crews. Their stories are intertwined with the history of the Republic and reflect the unique opportunities and dangers that piracy presented to those who chose its path. 
Mary Reed's journey into piracy began early in her life. Born in England around 1690, she was raised as a boy by her mother to secure a family inheritance. This disguise allowed Mary to pursue a career as a soldier and later as a sailor. She eventually found herself on a Dutch ship captured by pirates and decided to join their ranks. Mary's ability to pass as a man gave her an edge in the rough world of piracy, and she quickly gained a reputation for her bravery and fighting skills. Anne Bonny, on the other hand, was born in Ireland around 1697 and moved to the American colonies with her family. Spirited and headstrong, Anne was drawn to the adventurous and lawless life of pirates. She left her respectable marriage to join the pirate Calico Jack Rackham. Anne, like Mary, often dressed as a man and fought alongside the crew. Her fierceness in battle and loyalty to her comrades earned her respect among the pirates and fear among their enemies. The lives of Mary Reed and Anne Bonny converged in 1720, when both women were part of Jack Rackham's crew. They quickly formed a close bond, drawn together by their shared experiences as women in a male-dominated world. Their courage and skill were undeniable, and they played significant roles in several successful raids. However, their time as pirates was cut short when their ship was captured by a British naval vessel in October 1720. Captured and brought to trial, Mary and Anne's true identities were revealed, shocking the authorities and the public. They were both sentenced to hang, but their executions were postponed because they were both found to be pregnant. Mary Reed died in prison, possibly from a fever, while Anne Bonny's fate remains uncertain. Some accounts suggest she was released or escaped, while others claim she was eventually executed. Regardless of her end, Anne Bonny's story, like Mary Reed's, became part of pirate law. The legacy of Mary Reed and Anne Bonny is a testament to their courage and defiance. They navigated the brutal world of piracy with the same tenacity and skill as their male counterparts, challenging the conventions of their time their stories continue to inspire and intrigue, highlighting the extraordinary lives of women who dared to break the mold and seek adventure on their own terms. Pirate Democracy The Republic of Pirates was remarkable not just for its lawlessness, but for the unique form of governance it established. Pirate Democracy, as it came to be known, was a system that emphasized fairness, collective decision-making, and equality among crew members. This system stood in stark contrast to the authoritarian and hierarchical structures typical of the 17th and 18th centuries. The pirates' approach to governance was a radical experiment in self-rule that provided a model of egalitarianism and mutual respect. At the heart of pirate democracy was the practice of electing captains. Unlike naval ships where captains were appointed based on rank and connections, pirate crews chose their leaders through a democratic vote. This ensured that only those who had proven their leadership abilities and earned the trust of the crew could rise to command. Captains were expected to lead with the consent of their crew and could be deposed if they failed to act in the best interests of their men. This system promoted accountability and prevented abuses of power. In addition to electing their captains, pirate crews also made important decisions collectively. Matters such as planning raids, distributing plunder, and setting the rules of the ship were often put to a vote. This inclusive approach fostered a strong sense of community and solidarity among the pirates. It ensured that each crew member had a stake in the success of their ventures and a voice in the direction of their collective efforts. The pirates' commitment to democratic principles was a key factor in the cohesion and effectiveness of their operations. The division of plunder was another area where pirate democracy shone. Pirates adhered to a strict code when it came to sharing the spoils of their raids. Captains and officers received a larger share due to their leadership roles, but every crew member was entitled to a portion based on their rank and contribution. This equitable distribution of wealth was a major draw for many who chose the pirate life, as it offered a level of economic opportunity and fairness rarely found in other professions of the time. The pirates' system of governance extended beyond their ships to the broader community of Nassau. The Republic of Pirates operated with a level of self-organization and mutual support that allowed it to flourish despite the inherent risks of their lifestyle. The principles of pirate democracy provided a framework that enabled a diverse and often unruly group of individuals to coexist and cooperate effectively.
While the Republic of Pirates was eventually dismantled, its experiment in democratic self-rule left a lasting legacy that continues to be celebrated and studied as an early example of collective governance. Economic impact. The rise of the Republic of Pirates had a profound impact on the economy of the Caribbean and the wider Atlantic world. The pirates' activities disrupted trade routes, increased shipping costs, and created an environment of fear and uncertainty among merchants and governments alike. Their relentless pursuit of plunder and the audacity of their raids forced the powerful nations of Europe to rethink their approach to maritime security and commerce. One of the most immediate effects of the Republic of Pirates was the disruption of trade in the Caribbean. Merchant ships travelling between Europe, the American colonies, and the Caribbean islands were prime targets for the pirates based in Nassau. The pirates' strategic location allowed them to intercept ships laden with valuable goods such as sugar, tobacco, and rum. This constant threat forced merchants to take longer and more circuitous routes or to hire armed escorts, significantly increasing the cost and complexity of shipping. The economic impact of piracy extended beyond the immediate losses of captured cargo and ships. The fear of pirate attacks led to a decline in maritime trade and investment in the region. Insurance premiums for shipping skyrocketed as underwriters accounted for the increased risk. Many traders and shipping companies faced financial ruin as their vessels and goods were lost to pirate raids. The economic instability caused by piracy had ripple effects throughout the Atlantic economy, affecting not only the colonies and Caribbean islands, but also the major trading centres of Europe. In response to the growing pirate threat, colonial governments and private investors began to invest heavily in naval defences and privateering efforts. Ports and coastal towns were fortified, and naval patrols were increased to protect shipping lanes. These measures, while costly, were essential to maintaining the flow of goods and ensuring the safety of maritime commerce. The economic burden of these defensive measures was significant, but they were necessary to counter the pirates' dominance of the seas. The Republic of Pirates also had a notable impact on the local economy of Nassau. As the pirate stronghold grew in prominence, it attracted a diverse array of traders, craftsmen and opportunists looking to profit from the pirate trade. Nassau became a bustling market for stolen goods, where merchants could purchase valuable commodities at a fraction of their usual cost. This influx of trade and commerce brought prosperity to the island, albeit through illicit means. The local economy thrived on the back of piracy, creating a paradoxical situation where the success of the pirate community was both a boon and a bane for Nassau. Ultimately, the economic impact of the Republic of Pirates was a catalyst for significant changes in maritime law and naval strategy. The need to protect commerce and maintain order on the seas led to the development of more robust naval forces and the implementation of new policies aimed at suppressing piracy. The legacy of these changes can still be seen today in the modern laws and practices that govern international maritime trade and security. The Republic of Pirates, through its audacious challenge to established economic and political order, played a crucial role in shaping the future of global commerce. Nassau as a pirate haven. Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas, earned its reputation as the epicenter of piracy during the early 18th century. Its transformation into a pirate haven was driven by its strategic location, natural defenses, and the lawlessness that pervaded the region. By 1716, Nassau had become the de facto capital of the Republic of Pirates, a place where the rules of the outside world did not apply and where the pirate community could thrive without interference. The geography of Nassau made it an ideal base for pirates. The island's natural harbour provided a safe and accessible anchorage for ships, while the surrounding shallow waters and coral reefs offered protection from larger naval vessels. These features made it difficult for enemies to launch surprise attacks and allowed the pirates to defend their stronghold effectively. Nassau's proximity to major shipping lanes further enhanced its appeal giving pirates easy access to the lucrative trade routes of the Caribbean and the Atlantic. As Nassau grew in importance, it attracted a diverse and colourful population. Pirates of all nationalities and backgrounds flocked to the island, drawn by the promise of wealth and freedom. The town itself became a bustling centre of activity, with taverns, markets and shipyards catering to the needs of its residents. 
The economy of Nassau boomed as merchants and traders set up shop to buy and sell the goods brought in by the pirates. Stolen goods, from spices to precious metals, flowed through the town, making Nassau a hub of commerce and trade. The social structure of Nassau was as unconventional as its economy. The pirate community operated under its own set of rules and customs, rejecting the hierarchical and oppressive systems of the colonial powers. The pirates established a loose form of self-governance, where decisions were made collectively and authority was derived from the consent of the governed. This egalitarian approach fostered a strong sense of camaraderie and mutual respect among the pirates, creating a vibrant and cohesive community. Despite its prosperity, Nassau's status as a pirate haven was always precarious. The lawlessness and defiance that made the Republic of Pirates so successful also made it a target for suppression. The British government, alarmed by the threat to its economic and political interests, began to take action against the pirates. Efforts to reclaim Nassau culminated in 1718, when Governor Woods Rogers arrived with a fleet to restore order and assert British control. The arrival of Rogers marked the beginning of the end for the Republic of Pirates, as Nassau was gradually brought back under the rule of law. The legacy of Nassau as a pirate haven endures in popular culture and history. The stories of the pirates who once roamed its streets and sailed its waters continue to captivate the imagination. Today, Nassau's rich pirate history is a significant part of its identity, attracting tourists and historians alike who seek to explore the island's colourful past. The Republic of Pirates, though short-lived, left an indelible mark on Nassau and on the broader narrative of piracy in the Caribbean. Edward England and Fancy Edward England was one of the most notable pirates associated with the Republic of Pirates, known for his capture and command of the Fancy, a ship that became synonymous with his career. Born in Ireland around 1680, England began his seafaring life as a privateer before turning to piracy. His career as a pirate took off when he joined the crew of Christopher Winter, another prominent pirate of the time. England's rise to prominence was marked by his capture of the Fancy, which became his flagship and a key asset in his piratical endeavours. In 1720, England and his crew seized the Fancy from its previous captain, James Macrae, after a fierce battle off the coast of Malabar, India. The Fancy was a powerful vessel, equipped with numerous guns and well suited for the demands of piracy. Under England's command, the Fancy became a symbol of his leadership and ambition. He used the ship to conduct raids along the African coast and in the Indian Ocean, targeting merchant vessels laden with valuable cargo. England's command of the Fancy was characterised by his relatively humane treatment of prisoners. Unlike many of his contemporaries, who often resorted to brutality and violence, England was known for his more lenient approach. He frequently released captured crews unharmed and provided them with supplies to reach the nearest port. This policy, while earning him some degree of respect from his enemies, also created friction within his own crew. Many pirates viewed his leniency as a weakness and a betrayal of their interests. The conflict between England and his crew came to a head in 1721. After capturing a ship near the Comoros Islands, England's crew demanded that he execute the captured captain, an act that England refused. The disagreement escalated, and England was ultimately overthrown by his men. He was marooned on the island of Mauritius with a small group of loyal followers, left to survive with limited resources and no means of escape. England's career as a pirate came to an abrupt and ignominious end, a victim of the same democratic principles that had once allowed him to rise to power. Edward England's story is a compelling chapter in the history of the Republic of Pirates. His capture and command of the fancy highlighted the opportunities and challenges of life as a pirate. England's relatively humane treatment of prisoners set him apart from many of his peers, reflecting a complexity in his character that belied the simple label of pirate. His ultimate downfall, orchestrated by his own crew, underscores the volatile and often precarious nature of pirate leadership. Despite his tragic end, England's legacy as a pirate commander endures, adding depth and nuance to the narrative of the Republic of Pirates. The capture of the wider 1717 in the annals of pirate history, few ships are as legendary as the Wider, a former slave ship that became the flagship of the infamous pirate Samuel Bellamy. 
The capture of the Wider in 1717 was a turning point in Bellamy's career and a significant event in the history of the Republic of Pirates. Born in England around 1689, Bellamy, often referred to as the Prince of Pirates, embarked on his piratical career with dreams of wealth and adventure. His capture of the Wider marked the pinnacle of his success and set the stage for his enduring legacy. The Wider was originally a slave ship, built for the brutal transatlantic trade. In February 1717, Bellamy and his crew intercepted the Wider off the coast of the Bahamas. The ship was heavily laden with gold, silver and other valuable cargo, making it an irresistible target. After a brief but fierce battle, Bellamy and his men took control of the Wider and claimed its treasure. The ship's speed and armament made it an ideal vessel for piracy, and Bellamy quickly refitted it for his purposes. Under Bellamy's command, the Wider became a symbol of pirate power and prestige. Bellamy and his crew embarked on a series of successful raids along the American coast and in the Caribbean, amassing a considerable fortune. The Wider played a central role in these operations, serving as Bellamy's flagship and the base of his command. Bellamy's success and the wealth he accumulated aboard the Wider earned him a reputation as one of the most formidable pirates of his time. Tragically, Bellamy's time with the Wider was short-lived. In April 1717, just two months after capturing the ship, Bellamy encountered a violent storm off the coast of Cape Cod. The Wider, heavily laden with treasure, was unable to withstand the tempest. The ship was driven onto the shoals and broke apart, sinking with most of its crew and cargo. Bellamy and many of his men perished in the wreck, leaving behind a legacy of audacity and adventure. The story of the Wider did not end, with its sinking. In modern times, the shipwreck was discovered and excavated, yielding a wealth of artifacts and treasure that have provided invaluable insights into the life of pirates in the early 18th century. The Wider remains a powerful symbol of the Republic of Pirates, embodying both the allure and the peril of the pirate life. Its capture and subsequent loss illustrate the high stakes and fleeting nature of fortune in the world of piracy. Decline and British Response 1718 By 1718, the golden age of the Republic of Pirates was drawing to a close. The British government, increasingly alarmed by the economic and political threat posed by the pirates, decided to take decisive action to reclaim Nassau and restore order to the region. This marked the beginning of a concerted campaign to suppress piracy in the Caribbean and assert British control over the wayward colony. The arrival of Governor Woods Rogers in Nassau was a pivotal moment in this effort, signalling the end of the pirate stronghold and the beginning of a new era in Bahamian history. Woods Rogers, a former privateer with a reputation for toughness and resolve, was appointed governor of the Bahamas with a mandate to rid the islands of pirates. He arrived in Nassau in July 1718 with a fleet of warships and a contingent of soldiers, determined to enforce the royal pardon offered by King George I to any pirate willing to surrender and renounce their ways. Roger's arrival was met with a mix of defiance and resignation from the pirate community, many of whom recognized that the days of unchecked piracy were over. Roger's strategy to reclaim Nassau was twofold. He offered clemency and the chance to start anew to those pirates who accepted the royal pardon. Many, including notable figures like Benjamin Hornigold, took this opportunity, recognizing the futility of resisting the overwhelming force brought by the British. For those who refused the pardon, Rogers pursued a relentless campaign of suppression. Pirate leaders like Charles Vane and Calico Jack Rackham, who resisted, were hunted down, captured and executed, serving as stark warnings to others who might continue their lawless activities. The British response to the pirate threat was not limited to Nassau. Across the Caribbean, colonial governments and naval forces were bolstered to protect shipping lanes and combat piracy. The Royal Navy increased its presence in the region, patrolling the waters and engaging pirate ships whenever they were encountered. This concerted effort by the British and their allies gradually eroded the power and influence of the pirates, forcing them into hiding or driving them out of the Caribbean altogether. The decline of the Republic of Pirates was swift and decisive. By the end of 1718, Nassau had been reclaimed and transformed from a pirate haven into a lawful British colony. 
The remaining pirates who had not surrendered or been captured fled to other regions or were eventually hunted down. The era of the Republic of Pirates, which had brought both prosperity and chaos to Nassau, was over. The legacy of this period, however, continued to resonate, influencing future generations and shaping the popular image of pirates as both romantic outlaws and ruthless criminals. Capture and execution of major pirates. The British campaign to suppress piracy in the Caribbean culminated in the capture and execution of several key figures associated with the Republic of Pirates. These dramatic events marked the final chapter in the story of Nassau as a pirate stronghold and underscored the determination of the British government to restore order and rule of law in the region. The fates of pirates like Charles Vane, Calico Jack Rackham, and their contemporaries serve as poignant reminders of the perilous and often short-lived nature of the pirate life. Charles Vane, who had resisted British authority more fiercely than most, was one of the most notorious pirates to be captured. After being deposed by his own crew and left to fend for himself, Vane continued his piratical activities with a small sloop. However, his defiance and aggression could not save him from the relentless pursuit of the British. In November 1718, Vane was shipwrecked and stranded on an uninhabited island. He was eventually discovered and captured by a passing ship, brought to Jamaica and tried for his crimes. In March 1719, Vane was hanged, his death a clear message to any remaining pirates that their time was over. Calico Jack Rackham, another prominent figure in the Republic of Pirates, met a similar fate. Rackham, known for his flamboyant style and daring exploits, was captured in October 1720. He and his crew were celebrating a successful raid when they were surprised by a British naval vessel. Rackham's ship was overtaken, and he and his crew were captured without much resistance. Rackham was tried and hanged in Jamaica in November 1720, his body displayed as a warning to others. The executions of Rackham and his crew, including the infamous female pirates Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, marked the end of one of the last major pirate operations in the Caribbean. The capture and execution of these pirates were part of a broader effort to eradicate piracy from the region. The British and other colonial powers increased their naval patrols and fortified their ports to prevent the resurgence of pirate activity. Trials and executions of captured pirates were publicized widely to deter others from joining their ranks. The campaign was highly effective, and by the early 1720s, Piracy in the Caribbean had been largely suppressed. The executions of Vane, Rackham, and their peers were not merely acts of justice. They were also statements of power. They demonstrated the British government's resolve to control its territories and protect its economic interests. The fall of the Republic of Pirates and the subsequent crackdown on piracy marked the end of an era in the Caribbean. The romanticized vision of the pirate life, with its freedom and adventure, was overshadowed by the harsh reality of the consequences faced by those who defied the law. Despite their violent ends, the stories of these pirates continue to captivate the public imagination. Their lives and exploits have become the stuff of legend, immortalized in literature, film and folklore. The dramatic rise and fall of the Republic of Pirates and the ultimate fate of its most infamous members remain a fascinating and integral part of the history of piracy. Transformation of Nassau The transformation of Nassau from a pirate haven to a lawful colonial outpost was a dramatic and profound change in the early 18th century. Following the arrival of Governor Woods Rogers in 1718, Nassau underwent a significant overhaul, shedding its lawless past and embracing a new era of order and governance. This transformation was driven by the British government's determination to reclaim control over the Bahamas and to restore the rule of law in a region that had been dominated by pirates for years. When Woods Rogers arrived in Nassau, he faced the daunting task of bringing the unruly pirate community to heel. His first priority was to offer clemency to those pirates willing to accept the royal pardon. Many took this opportunity to surrender, recognizing that their days of unchecked plunder were over. Rogers then turned his attention to the physical and administrative aspects of rebuilding Nassau. He implemented measures to fortify the town, improve its defences, and establish a functioning government. These efforts were crucial in transforming Nassau into a more secure and orderly settlement. 
Rogers' administration also focused on re-establishing trade and economic stability in Nassau. Under pirate control, the town had become a bustling but chaotic market for stolen goods. Rogers sought to legitimize and regulate commerce, encouraging legitimate traders to return and invest in the island. He introduced new laws and regulations to control smuggling and piracy, helping to stabilize the economy and promote growth. These efforts gradually attracted a more diverse and law-abiding population to Nassau, contributing to its transformation into a prosperous colonial hub. The social fabric of Nassau changed dramatically as well. The pirate community, once the dominant force on the island, was gradually replaced by settlers, merchants and government officials. The town's character shifted from one of lawless adventure to one of structured colonial life. The new residents brought with them a different set of values and priorities, focused on building a stable and sustainable community. Nassau's transformation was not without challenges, but it marked a turning point in the island's history, paving the way for its future development. Despite these changes, the legacy of Nassau's pirate past was not entirely erased. The stories of the Republic of Pirates and the exploits of its infamous residents remained part of the town's cultural heritage. The physical remnants of the pirate era, from the fortifications to the shipwrecks that dotted the nearby waters, served as reminders of Nassau's tumultuous history. Over time, these elements became woven into the fabric of Nassau's identity, creating a unique blend of history and myth that continues to define the town today. The transformation of Nassau from a pirate haven to a colonial outpost was a testament to the resilience and adaptability of the community. It demonstrated the British government's ability to assert control and bring order to a region that had been considered beyond the reach of the law. Nassau's evolution is a fascinating chapter in the story of the Caribbean, illustrating the complex interplay between lawlessness and governance, and the enduring impact of the Republic of Pirates on the island's heritage. Impact on Maritime Law One of the most significant changes was the development and enforcement of anti-piracy laws. The British government, along with other European powers, introduced strict legal measures aimed at deterring piracy and punishing those who engaged in it. These laws included severe penalties for captured pirates, including imprisonment, transportation and execution. The trials and executions of prominent pirates were widely publicized to serve as a deterrent to others. The legal framework established during this period laid the groundwork for modern anti-piracy legislation. The rise and fall of the Republic of Pirates had a profound impact on maritime law and naval strategy in the 18th century. The audacious and disruptive activities of the pirates forced the world's naval powers to rethink their approach to maintaining order and security on the high seas. In response to the threat posed by pirates like those of Nassau, new laws, policies and practices were developed to protect maritime commerce and ensure the safety of shipping routes. In addition to legal measures, the suppression of piracy also led to significant changes in naval strategy and tactics. The Royal Navy and other naval forces increased their presence in pirate-infested waters, deploying more ships and patrols to safeguard shipping lanes. Naval commanders developed new strategies for dealing with pirate vessels, including the use of smaller, more maneuverable ships that could navigate the shallow waters where pirates often hid. These tactical innovations were crucial in the successful campaign to suppress piracy in the Caribbean and other regions. The economic impact of piracy also prompted changes in maritime insurance and risk management. Shipping companies and merchants faced significant financial losses due to pirate attacks leading to higher insurance premiums and the development of new risk assessment practices. The threat of piracy forced traders to adopt more cautious and strategic approaches to shipping, including the use of convoys and armed escorts. These changes helped to mitigate the risks associated with maritime commerce and contributed to the stabilization of global trade routes. The legacy of the Republic of Pirates also influenced the development of international maritime law, the need to coordinate efforts against piracy led to greater cooperation between nations and the establishment of international norms for combating piracy. These early efforts laid the foundation for the modern framework of international maritime law, which continues to govern the behavior of states and individuals on the high seas. The principles established during this period, including the right to pursue and prosecute pirates across borders, 
remain central to contemporary efforts to address piracy and other maritime threats. The impact of the Republic of Pirates on maritime law and strategy is a testament to the far-reaching consequences of their actions. The challenges posed by piracy in the early 18th century forced the world's naval powers to adapt and innovate, leading to lasting changes in how the seas are governed and protected. The legacy of these changes continues to shape the rules and practices that govern maritime commerce and security today, reflecting the enduring influence of the Republic of Pirates on the world of seafaring. Cultural Legacy The Republic of Pirates has left an indelible mark on popular culture and collective memory. The tales of daring adventures, ruthless battles, and the pursuit of freedom on the high seas have captured the imagination of generations. From literature and film to folklore and tourism, the cultural legacy of the Republic of Pirates continues to influence how we perceive and celebrate the golden age of piracy. One of the most enduring aspects of this legacy is the romanticized image of the pirate. Characters like Blackbeard, Charles Vane, and Calico Jack Rackham have become larger-than-life figures, embodying the rebellious spirit and swashbuckling bravado that define our modern conception of pirates. These figures are often portrayed as both heroes and villains, navigating a world of danger and adventure with a code of honor all their own. This duality has made them compelling subjects for countless stories and adaptations across various media. Literature has played a significant role in shaping the cultural legacy of the Republic of Pirates. From Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island to more contemporary works like Pirates of the Caribbean, the stories of pirates have been a source of fascination and inspiration. These narratives often blend historical fact with fiction, creating rich and engaging tales that captivate audiences. The allure of hidden treasure, the thrill of naval battles, and the quest for freedom and adventure are themes that resonate deeply with readers and viewers alike. The influence of the Republic of Pirates extends beyond literature and film. It has also left a significant imprint on tourism and cultural heritage. Nassau, the former heart of the Pirate Republic, has embraced its pirate history as a key part of its identity. Museums, historical sites, and themed attractions draw visitors eager to explore the world of the pirates who once roamed its streets. The island's pirate legacy is celebrated in festivals, reenactments, and educational programs that bring the history of the Republic of Pirates to life for new generations. The cultural impact of the Republic of Pirates is also evident in the broader mythology of piracy. The symbols and traditions associated with pirates' skull and crossbones flags, buried treasure, and life on the high seas have become part of our collective consciousness. These elements are not just historical artifacts. They are powerful symbols of adventure, rebellion, and the quest for freedom. The enduring popularity of pirate-themed media, from movies and video games to Halloween costumes and themed parties, reflects the deep-rooted fascination with the world of pirates. Ultimately, the cultural legacy of the Republic of Pirates is a testament to the enduring power of their story. The pirates of Nassau were not just criminals. They were adventurers and rebels who challenged the status quo and left an indelible mark on history. Their tales continue to inspire and entertain, offering a glimpse into a world of daring exploits and unbridled freedom. As long as there are stories to be told and adventures to be had, the legacy of the Republic of Pirates will live on, a vibrant and timeless chapter in the rich tapestry of human history. Economic Repercussions for Britain the economic repercussions of the Republic of Pirates for Britain were profound and far-reaching. The activities of the pirates based in Nassau disrupted trade routes, increased the cost of shipping, and posed a significant threat to British economic interests in the Caribbean and beyond. The British government's response to this threat involved a substantial investment in naval resources and a re-evaluation of its approach to maritime security and commerce. One of the immediate impacts of the Republic of Pirates was the disruption of British trade in the Caribbean. The pirates targeted merchant vessels carrying valuable goods such as sugar, rum and tobacco, which were vital to the British economy. The constant threat of pirate attacks forced merchants to take longer and more dangerous routes, increasing the cost and time required to transport goods. The loss of cargoes and ships to pirate raids also represented a significant financial blow to British merchants and investors. In response to these challenges, the British government increased its naval presence in the Caribbean. 
The Royal Navy deployed more ships to patrol the waters and protect merchant vessels from pirate attacks. This investment in naval resources was costly, but it was deemed necessary to safeguard British economic interests and maintain the flow of trade. The increased naval activity also played a crucial role in the eventual suppression of the Republic of Pirates and the restoration of order in the region. The economic impact of piracy extended beyond the direct losses of captured ships and cargoes. The fear of piracy led to higher insurance premiums for shipping, as insurers sought to cover the increased risks associated with maritime trade. These higher costs were passed on to merchants and consumers, leading to increased prices for goods and a general slowdown in economic activity. The economic instability caused by piracy also discouraged investment in the region, as traders and entrepreneurs were wary of the risks involved. The British government's efforts to combat piracy were not limited to military action. Diplomatic and legal measures were also employed to address the threat. The British worked with other colonial powers to coordinate anti-piracy efforts and to establish treaties and agreements aimed at curbing the activities of pirates. These measures helped to create a more stable and secure environment for trade and commerce, facilitating the recovery of the Caribbean economy in the wake of the pirate threat. The long-term economic impact of the Republic of Pirates on Britain was both a challenge and a catalyst for change. The disruption caused by the pirates forced the British to rethink their approach to maritime security and to invest in the resources and strategies needed to protect their economic interests. The lessons learned from the fight against piracy would influence British naval policy and commercial practices for years to come contributing to the development of a more robust and resilient system of maritime trade. The economic repercussions of the Republic of Pirates underscore the significant and lasting impact that piracy had on the global economy during the golden age of piracy. The challenges faced by Britain in addressing the pirate threat highlight the complex interplay between lawlessness and commerce and the lengths to which nations will go to protect their economic interests. The story of the Republic of Pirates is not just a tale of adventure and rebellion. It is also a story of economic disruption and the struggle to maintain order in a world of chaos. Influence on future pirate codes. The governance and codes established by the pirates of Nassau had a significant influence on future pirate groups and maritime rebel movements. The principles of equality, democracy and collective decision making that characterized the Republic of Pirates set a precedent for how pirate communities could organize and govern themselves. These practices were not only innovative for their time, but also served as a model for subsequent generations of pirates and maritime insurgents. One of the most notable aspects of pirate governance was the use of the Pirate Code, a set of rules that outlined the rights and responsibilities of each crew member and established guidelines for the division of plunder. These codes were often agreed upon by the crew before embarking on a voyage and were strictly enforced. The Pirate Code emphasized fairness and accountability, ensuring that each member of the crew had a say in important decisions and a fair share of the spoils. This approach to governance was revolutionary in an era when most seafaring professions were characterized by rigid hierarchies and harsh discipline. The democratic principles of pirate governance extended beyond the ships to the broader community of Nassau, Decisions were made collectively, with each member of the community having a voice in matters of importance. This egalitarian approach fostered a strong sense of solidarity and mutual respect among the pirates, creating a cohesive and effective community. The success of this system in Nassau demonstrated that a group of individuals, bound by a shared commitment to equality and fairness, could create a functioning and prosperous society. The influence of the Republic of Pirates' governance model can be seen in the practices of later pirate groups. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, many pirate crews adopted similar codes of conduct and principles of democratic decision-making. These practices helped to maintain order and cohesion within pirate communities and provided a framework for managing the risks and challenges of life at sea. The legacy of pirate governance also extended to other forms of maritime rebellion including mutinies and insurgent movements, where the principles of equality and collective decision-making often played a central role. The impact of the Republic of Pirates on future pirate codes is a testament to the innovative and forward-thinking nature of their approach to governance. 
The pirates of Nassau were not just lawless outlaws. They were pioneers of a unique and effective system of self-rule that challenged the norms of their time. Their influence on subsequent generations of pirates and maritime rebels underscores the enduring relevance of their ideas and practices. The principles of pirate governance, with their emphasis on fairness, democracy and accountability, continue to resonate as a powerful example of how even in the most unconventional settings, a community can thrive through mutual respect and shared values. The influence of the Republic of Pirates on future pirate codes is a fascinating chapter in the history of maritime rebellion. It highlights the ways in which the pirates of Nassau were able to create a functioning and equitable society in the midst of chaos and lawlessness. Their legacy serves as a reminder that even in the most challenging circumstances, principles of fairness and democracy can provide a foundation for success and stability. The governance model of the Republic of Pirates remains a compelling example of how a diverse and often unruly group of individuals can come together to create a community based on mutual respect and shared purpose. Modern Day Nassau Today, Nassau's rich history as the Republic of Pirates is a significant part of its cultural heritage and identity. The stories of the pirates who once roamed its streets and the dramatic events that unfolded in its waters continue to captivate the imaginations of locals and visitors alike. Modern-day Nassau embraces its pirate past, celebrating it through tourism, education and cultural events that highlight the island's unique and colourful history. The legacy of the Republic of Pirates is prominently featured in Nassau's tourism industry. Visitors to the island can explore museums, historical sites and attractions that bring the world of the pirates to life. The Pirates of Nassau Museum, for example, offers an immersive experience that showcases the history of piracy in the Caribbean and the role of Nassau as a pirate haven. The museum's exhibits include artifacts, interactive displays and recreations of pirate ships, providing a vivid and engaging look at the golden age of piracy. In addition to museums, Nassau hosts a variety of events and festivals that celebrate its pirate heritage. Pirate-themed parades, reenactments, and festivals draw crowds of visitors eager to experience the excitement and adventure of the pirate era. These events often feature costumed performers, music, and activities that capture the spirit of the Republic of Pirates. They provide a fun and educational way for people of all ages to learn about the island's history and its role in the broader narrative of piracy in the Caribbean. Nassau's pirate history is also an important part of its educational and cultural landscape. Schools and community organizations often include lessons and programs that explore the island's past and its connection to the pirates who once called it home. These initiatives help to preserve and promote Nassau's rich heritage, ensuring that the stories of the Republic of Pirates continue to be passed down to future generations. The island's pirate legacy is a source of pride and fascination for its residents contributing to a strong sense of community and identity. The influence of the Republic of Pirates can also be seen in the broader cultural and economic development of Nassau. The island's history as a pirate haven has helped to shape its character and its appeal as a destination for adventure and exploration. The legacy of the pirates has contributed to Nassau's reputation as a vibrant and dynamic community, attracting tourists, investors and new residents the island's pirate past is not just a relic of history. It is a living and evolving part of its identity, influencing its present and its future. Modern-day Nassau is a testament to the enduring impact of the Republic of Pirates. The stories of the pirates who once ruled its waters continue to resonate, inspiring curiosity and admiration. Nassau's celebration of its pirate heritage provides a bridge between its past and its present connecting the vibrant history of the island with the experiences of those who live and visit there today. The legacy of the Republic of Pirates is a rich and compelling chapter in the story of Nassau, reflecting the island's unique blend of adventure, resilience and cultural richness. And so, the tale of the Republic of Pirates comes to a closer story filled with adventure, rebellion and a relentless quest for freedom that still captivates our imaginations today. From the bustling pirate haven of Nassau to the legendary exploits of Blackbeard and his infamous comrades, these stories remind us of a time when the high seas were a place of endless possibility and peril. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the golden age of piracy and the incredible lives of those who dared to defy the world.
Thank you for joining us on this voyage through history. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories from the past. Until next time, keep the spirit of adventure alive.